So I'd like to begin uh, my talk today by reciting a passage from the Shoshinge, which is taken from the master work of our founder, Shinran Shonin, and it's a translation of what we chant every month for our monthly memorial service. So please join, join me in Gasho. When ignorant and wise, even grave offenders and slanders of the Dharma, all alike turn about and enter Shinjin. They are like waters that, on entering the ocean, become one in taste with it. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. So the meaning of this passage is that all beings, both the foolish and the virtuous, once encountering and hearing Amida Buddha's name, Namo Amidabutsu, are all of the same flavor or essence. In other words, under Amida Buddha, we are all of the same essence and value. So if you think about it, this is a very radical thought. It doesn't mean you have to agree with me or have the same opinions as me. You don't have to try to be good in whatever definition that is. We can disagree and we will both be embraced by Amida Buddha's compassion. It's that radical. So my talk today is actually in preparation for two events. And the first is, uh, will be for after this service today. So the format, format of today's service is a little bit shorter. So if you have the time after today's service and can stay, we're going to watch together a 30 minute film entitled Profound Silence. And for you on Zoom, if you stay on, you'll be able to see it also. So it was produced by an organization affiliated with the Gardena Buddhist Temple called Ichimi. And Ichimi is found in that passage that I just read that it means we are one in taste. <coughs> so this film features Joro Shinshu voices from the LGBTQ plus community, family members, and allies. And you'll see and hear one of our temple members, Carly Chikawa, sharing his powerful reflections. <coughs> so the purpose of this film is to help us think about how we can provide a safe space for those who identify as LGBTQ plus within the Sangha, their family members and allies, in order to create conditions for everyone to safely hear the Nebutsu teaching. And those in the LGBTQ plus community struggle to reconcile their authentic self with the pressures of society. The Buddhist teachings remind us that we can be our authentic selves and due to the wisdom and compassion extended through the vow, we are accepted as we are. So there's a passage found in the Amida Sutra. And one of the, it's one of the foundational sutras identified by our founder, Shinran Shonin, and that speaks to this. <coughs> the blue flowers emit a blue light. The yellow flowers emit a yellow light. The red flowers emit a red light. And the white flowers emit a white light. Each of the lotus flowers glows, weaving our harmonic scene while emitting a subtle fragrance. Shariputra, pure land is an ideal environment so that whatever one lays eyes upon will bring about awakening. Namandaps. <coughs> <coughs> so the Buddhist teachings remind us that we can be our authentic selves and due to the wisdom and compassion extended through the vow, we are accepted as we are. And saying that we can each come with differences that are naturally occurring for each of us. It is a message not only for how we should think of others, but how we think of ourselves. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to steal some of your drink. So the phrase, come as you are, is, is a phrase that really has become a theme for the Midwest Buddhist Temple. And Reverend Ron uh, recently spoke about it in his Dharma message. But come as you are is not the same as that's the way it is. It's not accepting inequities in life that systems allow because that's the way it is. It is not accepting inhumane treatment, mistreatment of others. In fact, that's the way it is is really not recognized in Buddhism because everything is constantly changing. Nothing has an everlasting existence. It is about the truth of reality, not the truth that hum humans project based on their discriminative thinking. That is a human construct. <coughs> so this phrase, come as you are, is coming from Amida Buddha, ultimate reality, and is speaking to each of us personally. So Joro Shinshu encourages us to know our true self, to become our true self, and to live our true life. 
So this calling from Amita is for us to break through our discriminating mind towards others, but especially towards ourself, to find who we truly are. Now, as Jodo Shinshu Buddhist, when we recite Namo Amida Butsu, it's an expression of our gratitude to Amida Buddha for awakening us to all-inclusive wisdom and an all-embracing compassion. <coughs> our part would be to put into action the compassion which comes to us from Amida Buddha and to apply it in our relationships with our fellow living beings and ourselves. So this appreciation in our daily life is the Shinshu way of expressing our gratitude for the wondrous virtues extended to us unconditionally and equally. Now, Shinran Shonin did not specifically address LGBTQ plus issues. You know, in his period when he was, uh, in his particular time period, he did not conceptualize LGBTQ plus. However, it is clear in his writings that his, his understanding of Buddhism can be interpreted in this way. The tools are in his teachings for us today. Buddhist sources affirm that all beings had existed in every gender role during their ceaseless cycle through the round of rebirths. Mahayana sutras claim that bodhisattvas intentionally took on female and various forms to liberate beings. So this short circuits attempts to associate holiness only with masculinity. In basic Buddhist thought, beings have no inherent unchanging identity. All aspects of personhood are empty of self-existence and constantly are changing. So gender, race, and other particularities of the current moment are just passing phases. We are female in one life, male in another, queer in another, and so on. So Shinran even affirms in the Tani show that all beings have been our mothers and our fathers. So in Shinran's uh, biography, there is gen gender fluidity. So many of you may be familiar with this part of his story. After becoming dis disillusioned in his inability to see past his blind passions, he came down from the mountain, Mount Hie, and went into seclusion at the temple called Do Kakudo. And that, that's even depicted in our legacy garden, the, the Shinran statue coming down from the mountain. In, in that temple, there is a statue of Prince Shotoku, and he was thought to be an incarnation of Avalokiteshvara or Kanon Bodhisattva. So Shinran circumambulated Shotoku's statue for 100 days. At the end, Shotoku appeared before him in a dream in the form of Kanon Bodhisattva. <coughs> Shotoku as Kanon declared he would become Shinran's wife and lead him to the Pure Land. So when he married Ashini, his wife, she was thought to be an incarnation of Prince Shotoku, a transformed man from a previous life. So Shinran seemed to understand that gender is not a permanent aspect of the self, it is temporary, fluid, and situational. <coughs> Shinran seemed to understand that, <clears throat> um, oh, excuse me, even the question of whether Amida Buddha is a man or woman, the statue we see, Amida may look male, but is that just our pre preconceived notions of what male looks like? We tend to think in binary terms, and I think a better answer would be Amida Buddha can be either a man or a woman, and Amida Buddha can be neither a man nor a woman. So Buddha is Buddha. Buddha doesn't stay in the gender framework which we think. So these understandings of inclusion are foundational for Jodo Shinshu and MBT, so why should we make a big deal about, about it like I seem to be doing today? So that's the point of this film that we'll be watching later. It's not enough to just say that these things are not a concern for us. To be an ally is not to be a passive listener. So during the um, Biden-Harris inauguration, if many of you may have seen that, there was a poet, Amanda Gorman, who presented her poem, The Hill We Climb. And in it she said, we've learned that quiet isn't always peace and the norms and notions of, of what just is, isn't always just is. Let me just repeat that again. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always just is. So I'm happy to announce that the Temple Board has approved more tangible support for our LGBTQ plus members and allyship, and we're establishing a fund to support MBT members who are part of this community 
to attend an Okaidi annual conference in Los Angeles. And it will allow for in-person personal interaction with others in the community. Sangha or community is an important part of this support. So we hope this is just a first step toward broader allyship. So the Kono Fund has provided initial seed money and as programming progresses, we're counting on temple members to supplement the fund for the future and to expand opportunities. Since this is a new initiative, the hope is this will be a first step in acknowledging our Sangha members who are part of the LGBTQ plus community. So also as a part of the rollout of, the, of this initiative, we are hosting a seminar on understanding allyship and why it is important to be an ally in this space. So we've invited Reverend C.J. Dunford from the Berkeley Buddhist Temple and the Buddhist Temple of Marin and Juliet Bost, who is a minister's assistant from San Mateo Buddhist Temple. And they'll be coming to Chicago and will be our guest speakers. And it's scheduled for Saturday, October 14th. And it'll be also followed by a panel discussion with local members. So please mark your calendar. In addition, Reverend CJ will share a Dharma message on Sunday, October 15th for our Dharma School and Adult Services. So stay tuned for more details about this event. So after the conclusion of today's uh, slightly shorter service, you're welcome to stay to watch the film Profound Silence, and it's 30 minutes long. But don't feel badly if you need to leave early, I understand. And we'll save time for any comments or sharing after it as well. So I would hope that you'll take the time to think about how we can, how we can each continue to provide a safe space for all to hear the Nembutsu. If you're not able to stay but still wish to watch the film on your own, please let me know and I can send you, to the, uh, send you the, the link. It, it's, it is available online. So before I close, I just want to acknowledge that this Thursday, this coming Thursday, is the International Day of Peace. And the Peace Day is observed around the world each year on September 21st. And it's, it's established in 1981 by unanimous United Nations resolution that Peace Day provides a globally shared date for all humanity to commit to peace above all the differences and to contribute to building a culture of peace. So for us, Jodo Shinshi Buddhists, may we come to receive the light of the Dharma, the light of Namo Amidabutsu in our hearts and minds, and may we live with the spirit of Shinran Shonin's words. May the Buddha Dharma spread, and may the world be at peace. So in closing, I would like to reread the passage from the Shoshinge. So please join me again in Gasho. When ignorant and wise, even grave offenders and slanders of the Dharma, all alike turn about and enter Shinjin, they are like waters that, on entering the ocean, become one in taste with it. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you very much.